Okay, so we get the force demands. We would have to redesign the elements, right, based on the force demands. Uh, moment, shear, right, whatever you need to design it for, depending on your material and uh, what's critical. Um, now we also need to look at displacements. So the displacements that we look at are going to be show deformed shape. We want the displacements, right, under earthquake loading. So now we can go here and look at the displacements. So now let's look at drifts. Okay, so let's look floor by floor. Look at displacement in inches. Five, four, three, two. So if I go to the top floor, they write, write these down, uh, 4.05 inches. Next one down, 3.24. Two point oh six and point seven six. So now from the displacements, then we can calculate drifts. Right? So we're gonna have a drift for each of these, and of course story one is zero, so we're gonna have that drift. So this bottom drift is gonna be point seven six inches over 15, or actually I guess we did 13 feet. And then this one's going to be 2.06 minus 0.76 over 13 feet. And then what you have to do is, remember we divided by R when we did all this? So you have to use the equation in the code that scales things back up. So we have to use the equation in the code Equation 12, 8 dash 15. 12.8 dash 15. And that equation says delta x equals c sub d delta x e divided by i sub e. And what this equation is saying is this equation is saying that when I calculate these values here, the drifts, these drifts are delta xe, right? And that's elastic. So what we did is we divided by r of 8, put the forces on that are arbitrarily a factor of 8 too low, and computed an elastic drift. Okay, that really doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm going to take that elastic drift that I get here, all of these drifts. I'm going to put those in there. And then I need to scale it back up by a factor of C sub D, which in this case is 5.5. But how the code's written right now, you put your calculated drift from the model in as delta XE, scale up by the 5.5, the C sub D, or if your system's different, you have a different C sub D value, and then divide by I, which is just one in this case, and that gives you the actual drifts that you would take those drifts and compare it to your 2% threshold. Okay, so at this point, you've got force demands. You redesign your elements based on force demands. You checked the drifts, right? You redesign things based on drifts if you need to. One, one last thing to write in your notes, if you need to make things stiffer, increase the size of the beams is what you need to do. Right? If you're trying to make stuff stiffer and you increase the size of the columns, that's not very effective. It's really the beam stiffness that dictates the frame stiffness. So if you need to make it stiffer, make the beams deeper. Um, and at this point, it's iterative. Right? Redesign things based on strength. Redesign things based on drift and stiffness if you need to. Um, once you have an updated design, Go back and update your model and redo it all again. So, and keep doing it until it works.